Father, could there be a God that would let this happen? How much do you want? Dear God, and give him glory, because the hour of his judgment has come. And worship him who made heaven and earth, the sea, and the springs of water, and from the throne, a voice saying, Praise our God, all who his servants, you who fear him, small and great. For you have not come to what may be comes, a blazing fire, and darkness, and gloom, and a tempest, and the sound of a trumpet, and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that no further messages be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even a beast touches the mountain, it shall be stone. So terrifying is the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. See that you do not refuse him with speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused him who warned them on earth, much less will we escape if we reject him who warns from heaven. At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, yet once more, I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The springs, yet once more, indicates the removal of things that are shaken, that is, things that have been made, in order that things that cannot be shaken, nor that may remain. I speak unto thee this day, and I say when men will build and build and build in religion, but not according to me, what do they build? I say they build atrocity, I say they build wickedness, I say they build iniquity, and yes, they are loving it so. And I say they amass for themselves fortunes and fortunes and fortunes off of the blood of the poor, the wretched, the miserable who believe in them. And I say all the while they claim it is for me that they do these things, it absolutely is not true. For I say that I, the living God, never ever intended that men would build according to wickedness, according to iniquity, according to darkness, and yet they do. And I say that compound the evil that they have done again and again and again, and thank them how they get by. But I say that the truth of it is that men end in hell the agonies of the same forever, and I say there is no escape for them. And I say for all they have built, I say they pay. Now I say you are living in times when great wickedness is being exposed, being revealed, but I say that the same is the consequence of men far from me. That is, it is the consequence of men building according to their own greed, their own lust, their own ambition, their own pride. For I say when men are left to do as they please, when they please, how they please, I say they grow bolder in sin. And I say that they will continue to manifest that which is the wicked intent of their hearts. Now I say this day when I came to earth as a man and I walked amongst those who claimed that they were my people, what did I find? I say that I found that those who were in the power scheme of it all were the worst, and I say they were filled on iniquity. And I say, yes, indeed, their deeds were evil, they were darkness and full of lust and greed and all manner of evil intent. And I say all the while they claimed they represented my father's kingdom, they absolutely did not. For I say they represented the lust, the greed of their own evil hearts, their own evil ways, and yes, they loved it so. And they increased and increased and increased in wickedness, and I say that it is me, the living God, who foretold them that they would be brought down. That is, that they would be brought to naught, that they would be devastated, that they would be given to the ruination that they deserve. And I say all the while I was calling and calling and calling for all of them to repent. But I say they did not repent, they scoffed, they mocked the very call of the same, and I say they went on headlong to their own damnation. And I say they were utterly destroyed, brought to ruination and despair. Now I say this day when you see the evil, when you see the wickedness, the darkness that is done in my name, I say no, that it is me, the living God, who will bring down the same. And I say that I do not call men to doubt me, to accuse me, to or seek to abuse me, because of the wickedness of evil men. Now I say there are those who say that I am not, but it absolutely is not true. And I say when men, because they are looking upon the wickedness of evil men, when they are looking upon the filthiness of religion, 
when they are looking upon the evil that is done in my name, claim that I do not exist because of the works of evil men, I say that such ones are fools. For I say that I, the living God, will always exist, for I say that I am the I am. But I say that evil men in all of their pretension and hypocrisy, in all of their iniquity and foolery, in all of their lustful schemes and plans, I say they will come to an end. And I say when they are finished and they stand before me, I say they will be cursed in the iniquity they have chosen above me. And I say they will find that they themselves will reap the evil that they have sown throughout eternity, and there will be no escape for them. For I say they will live in the agony of everlasting torments because of the wickedness they have done in my name. Now I say this day there are endless multitudes of evil wicked men upon this earth who have their schemes, their plans, their ambitions, and their lusts. And I say they will go on waxing bolder and older in the same, but I say no, that their end shall come. For I say that I, the living God, did not tolerate the increasing wickedness of my own people, but I say that I brought them down. And I say, so it is even now that it is me, the living God, who will bring to ruination, to devastation, those who are literally thinking they remain forever. And I say, it is me, the living God, who will expose and reveal them in their wickedness, and I say that the same shall be returned unto them. Now I say, this day do not be quick to think that I, the living God, am not just, for I say that I am. And I say, absolutely do not fall into the trap, the snare of the enemy that would seek to get you to accuse me. For I say, when you see the evil that is found in the hearts of men, why am I to blame? I say that I, the living God, am not to blame for the iniquity of those who are claiming to be mine. Now I say, consider when I came as a man and I walked among those who were supposedly Abraham's seed, what did I find? I say that I found multiplied wickedness. I say that I found extreme indulgence in lustful behaviors and men who were full of covetous lust day after day. And I say that I found the ones who had no remorse over abusing children in the most ungodly ways. And I say that I saw things that you would never imagine because my father allowed me to see. And I say, all the while, do you think that I accuse the Father because of the injustice, because of the wickedness, because of the perversion of men? Do you think that I turned upon him and demonstrated my anger and my rage because he allowed such things to be? No, I know that of a surety the Father is just because he is indeed the ruler over me. And I say that I know that the way that he decrees is the way of righteousness revealed. But I likewise know that men in their hearts are full of all manner and evil and wickedness if they do not keep their hearts right before him. That is, if they do not yield themselves over to be scrutinized by the mind of my spirit that they could indeed repent and be set free of sin. That is, when men grow proud in their religiosity, when they have contempt for the true way, and think they get by with their ways of falsity and refuse to repent from the same, what do they do? I say they literally seal themselves in their wicked deeds, and I say they are damned forever through it all. Now I say this day when I came as a man, I came calling for all men to repent. That is, I saw the nature of those who were claiming they were Abraham's seed and the wickedness that they were living in. And I say that I saw the pride, the contempt, that the ones who claimed they were the representative of the Father's kingdom, what they did in this earth. And I say I saw their abuse, their misuse, and their all-out failure to walk uprightly in the way that was given unto them. For I say they walked according to their own lust, their own desire, their own evil doings, rather than walking in the way that the Father provided for them. Now I say such ones as these did not escape the wrath, the fury, the indignation for their rejection of me. But I say they were indeed the literal victims of what it is that they thought they did against me. That is, in the sense that they were the ones who were left to wander and squander their lives throughout eternity. That is, they could do nothing more than exist in the torment, the anguish, the agony of their own way because they refused my way. 
and I say they are still in hell at this time for what they have done against me. Now I say this day there is no escape of the torment, there is no escape of the agonies that await the damned. For I say there is only one way that men are given forgiveness, and that is by repentance, revolution in their lives unto me. That is whereby they will repent fully, amend and change their ways, and walk uprightly in me. Now I say this day, if you will be thankful that it is me you are privileged to love, to serve and obey, then I say that you will be guided forth in my way. And yes, you will be given the truth, the light, the blessedness of who I am each and every day. And yes, you will be directed, corrected, and brought forth in the truth, the light, the mercy of who I am. And yes, you will be given the strength to continue, for it is me, the living God, who is ever-present, to give to you the same. That is, I'm present to give you the truth, to give you the light, to give you the mercy day by day. And I say that I am ever present to show you the way wherein you can be guided by me. And I say that I am ever present to show you the loving kindness, the mercy, the truth that I give to the truly repentant, the ones who walk in humility with me. But I say when men will merely look to their religion as their way of salvation, their way of safety, no, they are looking to lies. For I say that religion is literally rebellion against me because I say it is the work of men and not my spirit. I say this day that I, the living God, do not call you to be religious, but I say that I call you to be righteous by adhering unto me. And I say that I call you to be thankful that each and every day you can be guided in my way. And yes, you can be given the truth, the light, the blessedness of who I am, for it is me, the living God, who gives to my own the same. And it is me, the living God, who guides my people forth by a plain path, as they will believe upon me. Now I say this day it is me the living God who is giving forth the call. It is me the living God who is directing and correcting and instructing the ones who are mine. And I say when it is me that you will be looking unto, believing and trusting. When it is me that you will stay in the repentant frame of mind before. Then I say you are indeed brought forth by me. And yes you are given the light upon the path. For it is me the living God who gives to you the same. That is, as you will walk in repentance, revolution, the humility way of my life given unto the sons of men. Now I say this day that I, the living God, grow weary with men and women when they look upon the evil, the wickedness that others are in who want to accuse me. Now why am I to blame for that which lurks in the hearts of men? I say that I'm not. Yet I say that men in their frustration seek to ventilate upon me and abuse me literally by their thoughts and their words against me. But I say if they would grab hold of themselves and realize that the iniquity found in the hearts of men is the work of demons and the work of self, it is not my work. And I say when men will falsely claim they are serving me, that they are doing the works that I ordain, yet I say they are steeped in wickedness, they are covered in lust and greed and covetous longing. They are covered in pride and hatred for my true way. No, they are none of mine. But I say they are fools who are following the way of folly all to their own destruction. Now I say this day that I, the living God, do not call you to destruction, but I say that I call you to the way of my life. And yes, indeed, I call you to continue in repentance, revolution, that you can indeed be uplifted, brought forth, and ever guided by me. For I say it is indeed a good thing to be knowing that I am the one who will keep you day by day. And I say it is indeed a good thing to be knowing that I am the one who guides you forth in the way of my truth and my life. For I say it is a privilege to believe, to receive, and be ever guided forth by me. And I say it is a privilege to continue in repentance, revolution, ever humbling yourself unto me. That is, not giving way to the pride, the rebellion that is raging throughout the land, but rather being repentant unto me. For I say that I, the living God, do not call men and women to live in the fakery, the pretension of religion, and think somehow they get by on me. But I say that I call my people to live in the wholesome fear of me, that they can be respecting me. That is, that they can be coming forth in that which I offer and provide. That they can be coming forth rejoicing that it is me that they serve. 
Therefore, I say, be glad for the privilege to love, to serve, to obey, and be guided forth in my way. I've heard preachers even say that, you know, if you're troubled with adultery, just go ahead and commit it so that trouble won't be there anymore. Father, could there be a God that would let this happen? But they don't ever tell you that. How much do you want? They say, well, if you're troubled with lying, just go ahead and tell a lie. It's okay. God will forgive you. God won't God forgive won't you unless you, unless you repent. You repent.